to experience that, but the truth of the matter is, there are some of us here, probably many of us here, that find ways to, to keep ourselves hidden from one another. You maybe keep your spouse at arm's length. You, you don't share too much. You don't share too many of your fears, your anxieties, your worries. You find ways to hold yourself back. Some of us here, it's not in the context of marriage at all. It's, it's just that we put up a facade. We pretend to be someone that we're not. We act a certain way because we know if we do, then people will like us. We'll get attention. People will admire us. Some of us put everything on Facebook, and again, I'm not here to bash Facebook too much, but I'm just here to say, we put the best part of ourselves on Facebook, and we keep the rest of ourselves hidden. What are we doing? We're putting on fig leaves for one thing. We're covering ourselves up. We're covering our brokenness. We're keeping ourselves at arm's length. We're keeping ourselves from relationship, from being known, because we're afraid of being rejected. C.S. Lewis sums this up really in a very profound way. Um, he's sort of the, the human dilemma, what happens, he says, to love at all is to be vulnerable. Love anything and your heart is, will certainly be wrung and possibly be broken. If you want to make sure of keeping your heart intact, you must give your heart to no one. Wrap it carefully round with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in the casket or coffin of your selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. The only place outside of heaven where you can be perfectly safe from all the bothers of love is hell. Now, Advent is a season of longing. It's a time where we long for the one who came to get us out of this mess, to redeem us, to restore us, so that we can begin to practice and enjoy now what we were made for. And how does Jesus do that? There's another story of another garden. It's told in the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 14, we won't read it now, but you can look, reference it later. Mark 14, 43 to 52. And that's the Garden of Gethsemane. That's where Jesus is just really beginning his final hours. It's where Jesus is about to be arrested and then put on trial and condemned and, and crucified. Now there's a little detail in that story. What's really happening is, in a lot of ways, it's a parallel to what happens here, right? The presence of God comes down into Eden, searching out and, and bringing a message of judgment. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, really the same thing is happening. The presence of God is descending on that place as Jesus is being arrested, put on trial, condemned, and crucified. There's one little detail that only Mark records for us. It's strange. It almost seems like it doesn't fit. Mark tells us that it's, in all the chaos, there's one young man... Most scholars think it was Mark himself. And he takes off. He's terrified, just like Adam and Eve were. He takes off. He runs away. And here's the little detail that seems so out of place. He runs away naked. He somehow loses his cloak in all this chaos. Now, why would Mark include that? I'm going to suggest that it's because he's drawing our minds back to this story here in Genesis. The presence of God and all of its holiness and all of its terror comes down in the garden. And just as Adam and Eve did, Mark flees. He's afraid. He hides from the presence of God because it's so terrifying. But you know what? There was one who stayed. One who stayed in that garden. And that was Jesus. Jesus stayed in that garden to endure the presence of God. He stayed, he was arrested, he was condemned, he was put on trial, he was hung up on that cross. And on that cross he hung naked and ashamed. Naked in the presence of God. Fully known by God. But he was there instead of us. Jesus was known in all of our sinfulness and all of our brokenness. And you know what? Jesus was known by God and he was utterly rejected. Even Jesus himself cried out to his Father, Why have you forsaken me? Why have you rejected me? 
To put it very simply, Jesus, instead of us, was known fully and fully rejected. Jesus, instead of us, was known fully and fully rejected. Why? So that you and I could be known fully by God and accepted and loved. 